talking about the bishop elect the selfless man himself ladies and gentlemen give it up for the father the bishop elect dominic Orson. come on give it up to jesus somebody shout and give jesus some praise Kingdom man, kingdom man, kingdom man, kingdom man, kingdom man, kingdom man, kingdom man. In the name of Jesus, we are rising. Somebody say we are rising. In Jesus' name. You know, to hear such testimonies about a brother who almost took his life. That God used this Ark of Men conference to change his life. Come on, let's give Jesus some praise for such a testimony. Because one of the things that the enemy is doing is to kill men. You know, today I was reading the book of Ruth. And when you look at Ruth chapter 1, you realize that Naomi had a husband and the husband died. Had two sons and the two sons died. Men are dying everywhere. So when we are able to get that man like get men together like this, heaven is rejoicing. Heaven is rejoicing. And some of you women here, your prayer is that God will save your brother. Some of you have wives here, your prayer is that God will save your husband. Some of you have lost your fathers. But this generation, we will not die. I said the 21st century Christian man, you will not die kingdom man you will not die before your time say I will not die before my time say I will not die before my time say I cancel every premature death ahead of me say I cancel it in the name of Jesus say my husband will not die say my, my brother will not die say my father will not die say my son will not die say i cancel every attack on men in my life in the name of jesus in the name of jesus in the name of jesus we will not die but we will live to declare the mighty works of the lord you see a lot of people that when a parent dies usually the man I understand that usually men like to marry younger women but Abraham was older than Sarah and he did not die actually ended up burying Sarah before he died so premature death should not be associated to men I pray that we will not die Cancer will not take you out. Alcohol will not take you out. Accident will not take you out. Straight bullets will not take you out. May the Lord preserve you. May the Lord cover you. May the Lord give you long life and good health. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. So welcome again women we are appreciative of you for being here this is the ark of men sunday and we are glad that all our mothers our sisters our wives are present amen because i believe that god is gonna speak to us all today uh, the issue of most men are the women in their lives and it's because of the misunderstanding of the purpose of the man in our lives 
And so what was used to help us can also use to hurt us. And so I believe that as we are all getting out, I'm glad that we have Think Pink going on and it's helping us. Uh, but usually when we get able to get all of us together like this, and you can hear the perspective of from the man perspective, it will help. Amen and amen. Because some of us, the only perspective we have is what the society is telling us. God has to speak to us today. So I want you to prepare your hearts to receive and to apply. Receive the word and let it be sown on the good grounds in your heart. In Jesus' mighty name. And so today I'm excited for what God is about to do. Kingdom man, are you here? Yes. Amen. Now, if you are here for the for just you were not here Friday. The theme of this Ark of Men was the 21st century man. Uh, we are we're talking about the difference means to be a man in this 21st century. Uh, manhood have not changed, but the way we do things have changed. And if our women don't understand that they can also, um, there will be an issue. So I believe I'm so happy for this Sunday that God is going to use the man of God to really, really help us out. And so I want us to pull from him. I want us to prepare our hearts to really pull the grace and the anointing of God that is upon his life, that God will use him to be a blessing to us. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. We have the 21st century woman. And we realize that the woman that was there in the 1970s is not the same woman now. Uh, because things have changed. Amen. Back in the days, your father would not take you to school because you were a woman. Uh, but nowadays, women are going to school and getting big degrees, even bigger than men's degrees. Amen. And so things have changed and we need to learn how to still move and still keep our purposes on this planet. Amen. And so um, this is what the Ark of Men Conference is about and was about this weekend. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. Now, the man of God I'm about to introduce to you is not a stranger to this house. Um, <laughs> Pastor Paul Date has been a good brother, good friend. It's, been, it's hard to find friends in the ministry, but he's always here for us. He's been here from day one since we encountered each other. Anytime I call on him, he's there to be of a help to us. So uh, I'm so glad and I'm so thankful to the Lord for such friendship and brotherhood. God bless you, Pastor Paul, for always, always always you know there are some friendship, friendship that you don't need to call each other every day but you know you know and you know amen and the kind of life that i'm in right now sometimes it's hard for me to really really pick my phone up um, because so much going on at the same time uh, but he understands amen and anytime i call on him he doesn't mean he knows <laughs> and pastor paul thank you so much amen And tonight, today, the Lord is going to use him to be of a blessing to us. Uh, he's a great man, a man with one wife. He has a lot of children, five children. Amen. <laughs> Amen. All, all, all my friends have a lot of babies. Amen. And so we are happy to have babies. And that's why we need to be kingdom men, so we can direct and order our house to the Lord. He said, I know of Abraham that as for him, he will command his house to follow after him. Amen. May you command your house to follow after you as you are following God in Jesus' name. And so we have a video ready to be played uh, to introduce him. And so right after the video, please let us accept the ministry of Pastor Paul Date. Amen. And so please have your seat and then with a standing ovation right at the end of the video, let's welcome him. Amen. God bless you. Pastor Paul Date is a passionate preacher of the gospel who has traveled to many nations to spread the word of God. In the kingdom, you must...
must be always of use. A donkey was minding his own business. Jesus Christ sent his disciples who were fishermen to go and fetch a donkey. The owner did not ask why. You know why? Because the master had use of it. He considers it his personal mandate to represent the goodness of God. Through his training and work with the church spanning diverse roles over 20 years, he has proven to be a true servant of God. He is married to his beautiful wife and together they have five children. He serves his clients from a place of humility, understanding biblical wisdom. His affable and easygoing approach sets his clients at ease and typically results in a productive session with tangible results. From all over the world, Pastor Paul blends biblical principles with practical wisdom to furnish his clientele with tools and skills to navigate the terrain of relationships, careers, and ministry. He has been a consistent speaker at the Ark of Men Conference, hosted by Bishop-elect Dominic Osei, and has demonstrated his passion to see men arise in this generation. We have the honor to have God's servant in our midst. Ladies and gentlemen, with a clap and standing ovation, let us welcome Pastor Paul Date. Hallelujah. You can do it better for Jesus. This is the reason why we are here. Let's do it better for our illustrious hosts. He said his friends have many babies. So if you are not ready, don't be his friend. Amen. But, you know, God bless you once again for your obedience. God bless you for your humility. Not many people acquire titles and remain the same. Especially men. You know, men are wired to have egos. And when men get promotion, it's like a balloon with helium inside. It starts going up, right? But immediately, a little puncture goes into the balloon. What happens? So we thank God for your humility. Why don't you stretch forth your hands towards and bless him. Bless him. Bless him. Bless him. Bless him for his humility. Bless him for his humility. While your hands are still stretched, let's bless his wife, Prophetess Leslie. Wherever you are, God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. In Jesus' name, amen. According to Proverbs 22, verse 4, humility is the fear of the Lord. Its wages are riches, honor, and life. May that be your portion in the name of Jesus. Amen. Ark of men. Hallelujah. We want to welcome the woman as well. Amen. And if you are a woman here today, what you are about to learn and experience should equip you to understand, to discern, how to live with and how to appreciate a man. Hallelujah. Amen. Because understanding is everything. Understanding is everything. And so I want to ask that you permit the men to be men. And while you are listening or taking notes or whatever it is that you may be doing, gain understanding to how men are wired to make a big difference. Whether you are single, married, searching, looking, found, waiting, 
whatever the category you fall in. Amen. How many of you have been blessed by Ark of Men this year? Amen. <laughs> Hallelujah. I want to throw a challenge to every man who has benefited from Ark of Men. Before Abraham could practice actually being a father, he had to act like a father. He used resources in his own house to go and fetch Lot all while he didn't have a son. The Bible says on his way back, he encountered the priests. And after he gave his tithe, the Lord appeared to him and asked him what he wanted. And if Abraham was able to command his household, then you, a man here, God is also watching you. Would you command your household? Household here can represent your sphere of influence. So next year, who are you bringing to Ark of Men? Because the women are operating in contagious circles. Whatever they do that works, you see everybody else doing it. Don't keep it to yourself. This generation needs a majority of our men aligned with God. Amen? How many of you promise to start the recruiting process? Oh, lift up your hand. You are going to start from now. Inviting, prompting. If you have to sponsor, sponsor. And let them come. Because when your neighbor is a kingdom man, your neighbor ceases to be an enemy. Amen? When your neighbor becomes a kingdom man, you have more people on your team around you. That in itself is safety. Amen? Bow down your heads and let's pray. Father, these are your people. We are your people. This is your word. This is your word. Let it come alive. Let it cut asunder. Let it uproot. Let it destroy that which needs to be destroyed. Let it bring life. Let it bring healing. Let it bring liberation. Set men free. Set men free, Lord. Set men free, Lord. Set. Raise an army of kingdom-minded men in this 21st century so that our generation will not be the generation that perishes. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ, I pray. Somebody said amen. amen. You may take your seats. The word that I have to share today has been so heavy and I want to trust that it's because the clouds are pregnant with something that God wants to do. Rain is water. But when water is coming in the form of rain, how many of you can smell rain? So ordinary water doesn't have a smell, but when it's coming in a form of rain, you can smell it. There's something in the air. The clouds become dark because there's something that is going to be let loose on us. And I pray, I pray, I pray, I pray that your heart is ready. Let's do the declaration that I usually do and then we'll get into the word of God. I trust the integrity of God's word. It's un infallible, unfailing, faultless, impeccable, perfect, precise, and accurate in its declaration. Final, 
in its authority, comprehensive and all-sufficient in its provisions. Shout it like you believe it. I love God's word. Amen. We are trying to understand and overcome the trauma and the frustration of a Christian man. We are trying to understand and overcome the trauma of a Christian man. And in doing so, we are going to use one person in the Bible as a character study. And in this man's life, you will find parallels in your own life. Whether you are a man or a woman. Even though the emphasis or the, the, the focus is on men today. Amen? Amen? In doing so, we are going to ask a few questions. Why do men run? Why are men angry? And why do men fight? Men are usually put in a position where if you are too robust, you are called violent. If you are too soft, they call you so they call you soft or they call you a sissy, if you will. So it's almost like, how can I be wired as a man or as a man and function accepted in society? In counseling, you find many people, sometimes a woman will tell you, Pastor, I need my man to be more manly. And then some will say, I need my man to tone it down. So it's like ping pong. We are just going here. You, nobody. What is the role of a man? What is the model of a man? And typically I tell them that if you look at the life of Jesus, one minute he was the gentle lamb. Another time he was lashing people in the temple. That wasn't gentle. So then it becomes, how can a man manage the emotional structure of their life to show anger when it is needed and to be gentle when it is required. Because if Jesus can lash in the temple and yet have a gentle spirit, then it means whether I am wired to be gentle or I'm wired to be robust. I need to understand both spectrums. Because when a gentle man's children are in danger, you don't expect him to walk like he's going to a wedding. No. So both spectrums of emotion are important. So to this, the sermon for today, the title is Turning Trauma into Triumph and Testimonies. If you are sitting next to a man who is made in the image of God, look at them and tell them, we are going to turn trauma into triumph and testimonies. Now look at another person and tell them that we will turn trauma sorry, into triumph and into testimonies. Amen. All right. Let's define what trauma is for the purposes of our study today. So trauma is the lasting emotional response that often results from living through a distressing event. Experiencing a traumatic event can harm a person's sense of safety, sense of self, sense of judgment, Ability to regulate emotions and even navigate relationships. Long after traumatic events occurs, people with trauma can often feel shame, helplessness, powerlessness, and intense fear. Anybody ever felt any of those emotions? My two hands are up. 
If I could, I would lift my legs in, in addition. Amen. This is, this is life. Somebody say, this is life. This is life. One thing I want you to keep in mind as we go through this, because trauma, stress, and everything you encounter, enjoy, or endure in this lifetime is going to test your identity. Say identity. So unless I find my security in Christ, I will be walking in insecurity. Remember that. Unless your identity, your value system is in Christ, you will be walking in insecurity. Now let's take or turn our Bibles to the book of Acts chapter 7. Some of you are looking at me like, is he going to preach? Is this from the Bible? Okay, since you asked for it. If that one is too, too small, you can switch to um, your Bible so that it will be clear. For, thank you so much. Let's go. But when the time of the promise drew nigh, which God had sworn to Abraham, the people grew and multiplied in Egypt. Till another king arose which knew not Joseph. Hold it right there. If you are a man right here, lift up your hand and say, Lord, let my works, let my influence last generations. Joseph literally saved Egypt. But when the history books forgot what Joseph had done, all the people who were in the lineage of Joseph began to suffer in the land that Joseph saved. So if you are a man, you must believe God for the influence that you have to live beyond your life. Because the children of Israel, were, they were not suffering because there was a Ukraine war. They were suffering because their history books had been edited. Ah, God help us. Let's go. Let's continue. The same dealt subtly with our kindred and evil entreated our fathers so that they cast out their children to the end that they might not live. In which time? Bishop was sharing it the, the other time that the midwives they were given a mandate to abort. Amen. <sighs> so in that very dispensation where many men lost their livelihood to have even an opportunity to live, Moses was born. Can I tell you something? You cannot wake up in the morning and be alive by accident. You can do foolish things and die. But you cannot do foolish things and live. In other words, the intentionality with which God preserves your life should be the driving force of how you live. Nobody wakes up in the morning and heaven is like, oh, he was supposed to die. No! Living is an intentional privilege that God gives you. People died. Moses lived. You are here. Yesterday we learned that many people die daily. Why are you here? Why are you here? We don't choose how we come into this world. Only God authors it. And if perchance Many are dying like Moses' time and you are here. Don't talk to me about luck. There's nothing lucky about this. It's intentional. If you live your life 
like it is a lucky, happy go lucky, you are insulting God's intentionality. It's like I know you are coming and I prepare your best food and you come and you say, I don't want it. Excuse me? So Moses' life was ordered. It was intentional. And if you are listening to me under the sound of my voice, it is not an accident that you are here right now. No accident. The brother who was sharing the testimony who put a 9 millimeter, millimeter in his mouth Haven't you seen people's gun go off by accident before? So what more the person who has a gun loaded? <sighs> Let's continue. Let's continue. In which time Moses was born and was exceeding fair and nourished up in his father's house three months. Three months. Now I know many of us are living here today. We don't like the beginning of our lives. Sometimes we come in a, in a situation that if the world describes it, it is called a mistake. Let me tell you something. Nobody, nobody who was germinated through a sperm and an egg it's a mistake. I don't care what the surrounding circumstances are or where. You are not a mistake. According to Moses, the law of the land, he shouldn't be alive. Are we supposed to obey the law? Yes, we are, aren't we? Hello? Don't we obey our government? Even the Bible commands us to obey authorities. So what if the authority is saying you are a mistake? You see how men have a dilemma? Because sometimes you can obey the law to the detriment of the greatest judge. So the, the, the description on earth is that Moses is a mistake. The prescription of heaven is that Moses is the savior. Do you know how many saviors are sitting here today who are being called a mistake? Do you know how many men are sitting here today who feel useless, but they are the ones that God has chosen? <sighs> the devil has played with our emotions for far too long. And it has to end. It has to end. Let's continue. Give me, the, give me the New King James or the NIV if you... I know you like King, King James, but let's, let's bring it to 21st century. <laughs> At verse 21. Isn't that interesting? Anyway, but when he was set out, Pharaoh's daughter took him away and brought him up as her own. So he's born into an unfavorable situation. Against the law, he's hidden. He's been hidden. There are some of you, you, <laughs> you were hidden. You were never given expression. But you are the one that God is going to use. Ah, ah, ah. Listen, listen, listen. Can I ask you a question? What if your future does not resemble your past? What if? The glorious future that God has for you does not resemble the past that you have cried about but has, have also owned as yours. You know, human beings are very funny. We can own the things we pray about. My sickness. <laughs> My high blood pressure. Nobody is denying that high blood pressure exists. But why personalize it? Have you noticed that when you personalize something, it's harder to steal? <laughs> when you personalize a car, that can only use your fingerprint. Who can steal it? Nobody. 
So you are personalizing something that is not usable by anybody else but you. Today, some of you, you will rewire your identity by force. It happened, but don't own it. Hallelujah. Ah, let's continue. Let's go. And Moses was learned in all the wisdom of the Egyptians and was mighty in words and deeds. Now when he was 40 years old, it came into his heart to visit his brethren, the children of Israel. And seeing one of them suffer wrong, he defended and avenged him who was oppressed and struck down the Egyptian. For he supposed that his brethren would have understood that God would deliver them by his hand. But they did not understand Jesus. And the next day he appeared to two of them as they were fighting and tried to reconcile them saying, Men, you are brethren. Why do you wrong one another? But he who did his neighbor wrong pushed him away saying, Who made you a ruler and a judge over us? Do you want to kill me as you did the Egyptian yesterday? Why do men run? Then at this saying, Moses fled and became a dweller in the land of Midian where he had two sons. When you don't heal from your trauma and you bring offspring in your trauma, you're going to have traumalets. That's how the generation passes it on. Because you didn't, what you don't heal from, you will bleed from. And when you are bleeding, it's the people who are close to you who are being infected by the bleeding. Let's finish reading so I can really get into it. And when 40 years had passed, the angel of the Lord appeared to him in a flame of fire in a bush in the wilderness of Mount Sinai. When Moses saw it, he marveled at the sight. And as he drew near to observe, the voice of the Lord came to him, saying, I am the God of your fathers, the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob. And Moses trembled and dared not look. Then the Lord said to him, Take your sandals off your feet, for the place where you stand is holy ground. I have surely seen the oppression of my people who are in Egypt. I have heard the groaning and have come down to deliver them. And now I will send you to Egypt. This Moses, whom they rejected, saying, Who made you a ruler and a judge? Is the one God sent to be a ruler and a deliverer by the hand of the angel who appeared to him in the bush. <laughs> some godly endorsements start with some human rejections. Oh, come on, come on. Where is... Where, where, where is brother Elijah? According to your testimony, some of the rejections were a setup. You know, but when the rejection comes in the beginning, we question, we say, God, why? 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 I'm coming to church. I'm doing Bible study in the morning. I moved from New Jersey to Connecticut in faith to serve in your house. And it's almost like the one rejecting you is finding a reason not to give you what you should easily get. All right. Number one, God has preserved you and positioned you in the right family. What does this mean? Moses' birth condition was not conducive, but it was God's positioning. There are some men here, I know, if you had the chance, the description of what your father did, the description of what your mother did, what that family member did, it's not good. 
but I came to shake your mindset and let you know that there is nothing that God will allow you to encounter, endure, that he has not equipped you to overcome. Or maybe you thought, you thought that, listen, listen, I need a perfect family to manifest the perfect will of God. Oh, I came to announce to you, that is not how God works. Listen, anybody can win a good basketball game if you give me the dream team. With a dream team, you can win any game because they are the best in the world. So even I can pretend to coach the dream team. All I'm probably going to say is that give the ball to LeBron James. They'll figure it out. But God specializes in using the stone that the builders have rejected. The one whose story is not wanted by Hollywood. The one whose situation is not a prayer request like, oh my God. I want you to imagine the life of Moses. Brought up in what would be described as the White House of today. Only to grow up and realize that he had lived a lie. <sighs> now he's conflicted. Am I an Egyptian prince? Oh, or am I an Israelite man? On one hand, Egypt has all the promises. But he knows that when he puts his head on the pillow, his dreams... The cries of his soul are in Hebrew. Do you know how many men are forced to function in a row that they were not wired to function in? But society has told them that this is how it ought to be. So even though there's an emotional turmoil, they are pretending that they fit in. That's why it's wrong for you to adopt society's definition of who you are. When the master planner, the one who wrote the, the computer code of your DNA has called you that you are the leader but society is telling you that you are a nobody. Do you know what the trauma of that means? Now he's going to measure everything that happens to him through the eyes of mistaken identity of wrong identity. He has no place to belong. So much trauma for the man called Moses. Because luxury is good. But luxury that doesn't make you sleep at night is not luxury. It's not luxury. No, 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 no. no. That's why in our society, you cannot define yourself by the car you drive. The Bible says that Moses was allowed to live with his own parents for three months to the point where Pharaoh's daughter saw Moses and picked Moses up. Somebody say preparation. Preparation. Preparation is not for the general public. Preparation is a private issue. You know, listen, even the best teams, they don't practice in front of the same number of people that they play against. The problem with our generation is that we want to be, we want to be complimented on everything we do. We want everything to be liked. We want everything to be retweeted. But your training is not supposed to be retweeted. So a man who will lead a nation is thrown away in a river. And nobody knows. Can I talk to somebody who is in a lonely season? Sometimes your loneliness is for your own preservation. Let me tell you, premature exposure and premature promotion has killed many people more than enemies. Thank you. So God is hiding the one he has chosen, the one the world has rejected. And, but God says, let me hide him now. Let me hide him. Listen, God can order the right people to look after you. Imagine Moses being raised with the taxpayers' money of the same nation 
that he's going to overthrow. <laughs> Listen, God has a way of hiding. Number three, say God is prompting me. I have a problem with Christians who do not engage their mental faculties. In other words, they over-spiritualize everything. Listen to what the Bible says. The Bible says it entered into his heart to visit his brethren. If you remove the spiritual connotations of that, it simply means he had an idea. Do you know how many of us have shut out our ideas because our trauma did not allow us to process God's prompting as an idea? The lady, was, the lady was sharing the testimony and we were laughing about it, right? In her mind, she just got a text message from a parcel that said X, Y, Z. Now imagine they also got the prompting to send that text. But they were like, ah, no, no, no. Well, that testimony happened today. Talk to me. So listen, kingdom-minded man, 21st century, you must understand that God can prompt you with ideas too. Now, one of the things you must understand, for, for Moses to go and visit his brethren, it wasn't something that was, was pleasant because he's going to go and visit the people who he internally believes he should be part of, but who outwardly he cannot come out and say, I am. So he's conflicted. His convictions is fighting with his convenience. And when convictions and convenience fight in a person, he, their identity is diluted. It's not pure. So Moses was a man, but he was a man lacking identity. When he's with the Israelites, he knows what he's missing. When he's with the Egyptians, he knows what he likes. But knowing what you like, and knowing what you love is always a battle that man will fight. I speak to many men and they'll tell you, Pastor Paul, I want to change my car. I want to do the... I ask them, why do you want to change your car? So, yeah, you know, like, I say, are you more interested in what people's assessment of you, seeing you driving that car will be? Or are you interested in what you yourself think? Listen, a man should not delegate the value of his life to somebody who is just an observer. <laughs> Observers are worried and contributors are silent. No! The people who contribute to your life, they are the ones whose opinion you should be worried about. And the 21st century man must remember you may have 20,000 friends on Instagram or Facebook, but you must live your life for the audience of one. One. If God is pleased, I don't care if you like it. Too many men are, are, are aborting their destiny because the masses must approve what God is internally prompting you to do. Did you consult them before you got saved? Did God ask them before he sent Jesus to you? And you are here measuring the worth of your life by their opinions. Oh, may God deliver us. Let's finish. Let's continue. Come on. God's call is personal and private before it's public. You remember? The Bible says that Moses believed that the people will accept him as the chosen leader to lead them out. The Bible didn't say that Moses believed that he was the one. It said he believed that the people will accept him. In other words, I can have a full calling of God on my life to be the man that leads my family. To be the man that leads my society. To be the man that leads my church. To be the man that is the light in the community. But if I am waiting for the people 
I have subjected the power of God to the opinions of men. And if you are sitting here and you've ever, ever watered down the hope in a man, may God help you repent. Because, listen, Moses did not find any support among the Israelites. If you are a brother and you don't know how to pour water on somebody's seed, then you are as good as weeds. We must build a bond in such a way that your success is my success. Your, your, your breakthrough is my breakthrough. We must be so connected in the will to have and see each other do well that I don't have to go and get validation from Egypt. Listen to Moses' trauma. In Egypt, he was accepted. Among the Israelites, he was rejected. And you wonder why many men don't want to come to church, right? It's because in church, men can be very judgmental. And because we've been bruised so much, we don't open up. So when a person is hurting and they have to choose between going to the church and going to the world, at least in the world, they are drowning it with alcohol. So they go. The people needed help. Moses believed he was God's help. He showed up and the people said, hey. They were telling him of his past. Were you not the one who killed that guy? You want to come and do it to us? Many men of today are running not because somebody is chasing them, but because the echoes of negative words spoken is echoing and reverberating in their mind. Wherever they turn, wherever they turn, wherever they turn. Listen, in, in, in America today, if you have the unfortunate experience of being incarcerated, you know how difficult it is to find even a menial job. It is because man will always see you starting from your past. God will always see you starting from the future. The Bible says while we were yet sinners, while we were yet struggling, while we couldn't accept God, Say, I will not break a man with my words. If you're a woman here, say, I will not break a man with my words. Had God called Moses? Yes. But when he showed up, the people were like, who made you judge over us? Simple question it seems, but a piercing one. That made a brave man like Moses run. He didn't just run. He fled the country. Because, you know, they probably would have tweeted it. Even if they accused him and helped him, okay. But they probably would have tweeted it and said, the guy, he's the one. I know where he is. And if there's a ransom, probably they will do it even faster. Internal persecution. Listen, there are many men who are broken whose wounds are not outward. So when you see a man not acting the way he should act, there's some, like, for example, when you're driving and you experience road rage by somebody, chances are that that person didn't wake up that day and decide that I'm going to act out my anger while driving. Something is pushing them. When our brother was sharing the testimony about how his trauma was manifesting, nobody wakes up in the, in the morning in their right sense and decides that I'm going to do everything possible to make my life miserable. No, there is something that's driving them. It's that internal persecution. His identity was anchored in his circumstance. And then he tried to find identity by affiliation and association. So when all that is not working, now he has bent up anger because he, he hates injustice. How many of us hate injustice? 
Yeah, we all hate injustice. But anger is like fire. If you light it on these flowers, it will burn the house. If you put it under white rice and tomato sauce, we get jollof. So when you see a man who is acting out angry, the anger has a purpose. But if it is misplaced, it brings trouble. The same Jesus who fed 5,000 last the people in the church when they made ministry business. Was that not anger? Why didn't he show them love? So you see, for a man, the balance is how you manage these things. And the devil is using the things of the past to blind us from using every emotion that God has wired you to feel. Anger is not a false emotion. It is an emotion that God wired you to have. The question is, where is that anger being expressed? We all want validation. Anybody here who doesn't want, everybody wants validation. But if you seek validation from the wrong people, they will give you validation that is a recurring bill. And you will pay it with your life. If the wrong people endorse you, <laughs> if the wrong people endorse you, even what is free is taking away your dominion. If you add free to dominion, it's freedom. So when, when somebody tells you something is free, check the fine print. Because you will sign free. And then all of a sudden, you, you see the charges coming on your, on your bills. Like, what? I thought it was free. No. It was free in exchange for your dominion. So in the book of Hebrews, the same story that we are reading in Acts, it said when Moses was of age, he refused to be called a child of Egypt. He chose to suffer with the children of Israel than to enjoy the temporary passing riches. So in other words, when a man matures, they make their decisions not on temporary things, on lasting things. Lasting things. Let's continue. Fear will make you flee. Faith will make you fight. If you are a man, write that down. Anytime you are fleeing, ask yourself, who is chasing me? Usually it's nobody. It's just a voice. One of the things that the devil's ministry involved is is accusing the brethren. And when his accusations follow you and you don't walk in faith, you will flee. So Moses had to flee. We abandon our call because of trauma. Moses did. Because trauma is affecting your identity. Your calling is very personal to who God has made you. You can be motivated by somebody's call, but you can't copy their call. That's why your personal confidence is very necessary. Last but not the least, trauma gives us a wrong mindset and a view of ourselves. Jesus, after having fasted for 40 days, at the height of his spiritual powers, I would even be bold enough to say that he was so anointed at that time that if a bee stung him or a mosquito bit him, that mosquito should, or the bee should fall under the anointing. He's the son of God and he's added 40 days fasting to it. And the devil comes to him and he says, if you say you are the son of God, men, your identity will always be questioned. If you say, are you really a man? Are you sure you were born male? Are you the one God called? Do you think you deserve a family? Isn't that the same thing the devil used in the garden? Has God really said? See, one of the things you must know about the devil is that he is not a creator of anything, but he's the distorter of everything. He can use God's word. Has God said? Then he began to explain. 
Oh, he has said it, but he said it because if you do, you become like him. And here, here Adam and Eve were. Whose image were they created in? God. Brother, 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 quick, come. When a man doesn't have confidence in himself, no, stand here. When a man doesn't have confidence in himself, that is like me with my afro selling brother Quay eh? a hair product that will make him bald. Is he bald? Were they created in the image of God? But the devil made them believe that eating the fruit is what will make them become what they already are. So the only reason Brother K will buy what I am selling is if he looks in the mirror and he sees that he has an afro so I can sell him a bald product. There are many of us, we are in line to buy something that we already are. We already are. The example of Jesus comes to mind. Jesus kneels down after, after persuasion from um, 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 John the Baptist. Baptizes the Son of God. The Son of God comes out of the water. And Jesus turns on the PA system of heaven. And says, this is my Son in whom I am well pleased. All Jesus did was submit in humility. There are many women today, if your man is humble, you don't know how to appreciate him. Even God, even God appreciates us before we show our value. Even God, this is my son in whom I am well pleased. He had not healed the sick. He had not raised the dead. He had not even called a disciple. He had not started ministry. There are many of you women you measure men by potential. Ha -ha. But God measures us by the seed. The seed. So can you imagine how many men try to find hope in their spouse, in their family, in their brethren? And they were told, based on your history, you ain't going nowhere. Remember Joseph? He told his family the dream. The very people he was supposed to save, they killed it before it could even germinate. Or at least so they thought. Last night, I shared something with, uh, during the discussion. I said that you will safely heal. Or no, you will heal from what you safely reveal. And you can die from what you fearfully hide. That's why you must, you must cherish and protect the people in your inner circle jealously. Jealously. Jesus tells the 12 disciples, watch with me. Then he carries the three, pulls them aside. He says, listen, pray with me. My heart is heavy. Why didn't he tell all the twelve? Huh? What, what? <laughs> One of the capacities you can use to measure a man is can they hold a secret? Can they hold a secret? You remember Ark of Men, Maryland? Wasn't that around the time you were, you were, you were acquiring this? <laughs> so when we were going back and forth, we were going, so when f later on the announcement came and I asked you, you said, oh, during that time, even while I was on my phone, I was doing the signing. I said, hey, this man, capacity to contain. There are many men like us today. It's like having soda in a bottle. When you shake it, there's turmoil going on, but you don't see. If you open it by mistake, you will spill everything. That's why men need 
figureheads, mentors, fathers, uncles, people who can hold them in a time of turmoil till things calm down so they can safely expose what is in them for the benefit of the world. And for some men, they haven't had that growing up. And so the first person is their wife. And when their wives are not able to handle that, it means that their uncle is down. A story is told of a man who went to church and he went to church with his family and in a hurry he forgot to put off the cell phone ringer. And while they were preaching, his cell phone was going on. Going on and he had one of those unique ringtones that everybody knows that this one is, is your phone. <laughs> but it's in the back. He couldn't go and get it. So his whole family berating him. The pastor used the preaching to give him an uppercut. So after service, the man himself, he was down. Nothing that was said affected him. So he went home, dropped off his family. He said, I'll be right back. He was just driving. He needs to let out steam. While he was driving, he saw a sports bar. He's not a drinker, but he likes sports. Any man likes sports? Yeah, 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 okay. So he went there, sat down, and the, the waiter said, anything to drink? He said, give, just give me club soda. You know, I don't drink or whatever. So he was taking the club soda and turning like this. And the waiter coming with so many plates happened to be in her way, and the food spilled all over him, everybody else, expecting that the same sound from the church would ring in the bar. He was like, oh God, I'm finished. The manager of the bar came with a towel, wiped him, gave him a new shirt to wear, repositioned him to sit somewhere. They gave him a free drink. Nobody asked him to pay for the mess he made. When he finished and he was going to pay for his drink, they said, no, you don't pay. The manager came to him, hugged him and said, listen, everybody has a bad day. Wait, wait, wait. Legend has it that this man has not gone back to the church, but he's a regular member at the bar, even though he doesn't drink. The moral of the story is that we need people to live with men based on understanding. Understanding. So back to the life of Moses and we see how Moses experienced trauma. Moses experienced trauma in four ways. Number one, he began to have the feeling of unworthiness. And then he developed an inadequacy mindset. He developed the need for approval addiction. Approval addiction. That is when you test what is right with the popularity. How many of you know that in Christianity, you will hardly ever have the majority? Even the road to heaven, the Bible says it's a narrow road. So if you are looking for California Star Highway, good luck. That's why the things of God are not done by everybody. Even though everybody knows. You can't Even Jesus could not win an election with Barabbas, a career criminal. So don't base what God is doing in your life with everybody's approval. And that's why what you shared yesterday really blessed me. Actually, it is one of the things that I will elevate in my respect for you. The fact that you can take such a decision even though anyway, God bless you. Let's go. Self-doubt. Self-doubt is when you know the word. You've read the word. You know the word is talking to you. But I say, nah, it's not me. Oh, no, no, it's not me. It's not me. It's not me. It's not me. Inferiority complex is when the thing is the favor of God, but you are interpreting it as 
the falsehood of God. Because favor is a burden. Favor is responsibility. But when a man sees favor and they run away, it is like a, such a negative person who finds and sees negativity in everything. You give them a positive sign. They will deconstruct it and give you a negative sign. That's how negative they are. Such as they think, so are they. Let's see how it happened in the life of Moses. And then we'll pray. So, after all this has traumatized Moses, 40 years later, God appears to Moses and says, I know you thought that you were the one to uh, free the people. And indeed you are. So God says to Moses, come, I will send you to Pharaoh that you may bring God, sorry, that you may, you may bring my people, the children of Israel, out of Egypt. But Moses said to God, who am I? Identity crisis. Excuse number one, I am not worthy to be used by God. I am not worthy to be used by God. Listen to what God told him. But I will be with you. So you plus God, majority. Anybody else who believes in what God has told you to do is a bonus. But you must first believe it. You are what the word of God says you are. You are not what American statistics calls you to be. Moses said, who am I? I'm not worthy. God's response was, no, I will be with you. If God is with you, who can be against you? Every morning, remind yourself, if God is with me, who can be against me? Excuse number one. Let's go to excuse number two. He says, Then Moses said to God, If I come to the people of Israel and say to them, The God of your fathers has sent me to you. And they ask me, What is his name? What shall I say? Excuse number two. What if I don't have the right answers? You are waiting to be qualified for God to use you. So who is the one qualifying you? <laughs> God, that, you've heard it before. God doesn't call the qualified. He qualifies those he calls. That is why it's good to have as many degrees on your resume as a thermometer. But it doesn't matter. When God steps in and you are still using degrees, then you are in trouble. Am I saying it's, it's bad? No, 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 no. Get them, get them. But submit them for God's use. Nobody comes in the presence of God wearing their crown. How dare you? No! Moses was asking, what if I don't know? What if my accent is wrong? What if I'm going to be the only black man among them? What if, what if, what if my last name is, 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 is hard to pronounce? Hey, the things men do. What if nobody believes me? Sometimes a man is looking for just one, one person to say that I'll stand with you. They can't find. And listen, for all of us men here, it's not because we are wicked people, but it's because we allow the environment to affect us more than the word that is in us. Listen, a ship doesn't drown because there's water around it. It drowns because the water around it gets inside of it. You may be in, in a faithless environment, but your faith on the inside should overcome the environment in which you are. So they may be saying there's a casting down. What is the word of God saying to you? The statistician is, the statistician is making money by telling you that by this year, this and this and this many people are dying. And here your faith is subjecting to what the statistician has written over what God has written. Come on, kingdom man. 
Whose voice are you hearing? Excuse number three. And then we'll pray. What if others don't respond and doubt me? You are going to wait on the people who need to see God in you to be the validation of whether God is in you. Really? You are going to wait on somebody who needs God more than you to validate the God in you. Ah. It, it, <laughs> It's like, it's, it's like going to the government as a church and asking them to help you seek the Lord. You know, our beloved country, the government is building a cathedral and the churches are building prisons. That one is for another man, Ark of Men's Conference. Let's stick with Moses, I beg. Let's not go <laughs> And God's, God's answer is that I will empower you. I will empower you. And even that statement, categorically, it is wrong. Because in God's presence, there is no lack. So basically, he's already empowered. But his language and faith is not up to the point of tapping into the totality of God. So God even has to use a language that is almost not correct. So that his mind can capture the fullness of God. So the Bible says that God is able to do far abundantly above all we can ask or think or imagine. In other words, if your vocabulary is not like some of the people who read a book a week and your prayer is limited, your thoughts should not be limited because God can answer a prayer that is in the form of a thought. Excuse number four. I am not talented. I'm not gifted enough. Jesus Christ. But Moses said to the Lord, Oh my Lord, I am not eloquent. I am slow of speech and of tongue. Because guess what? When Moses watches the news, sees everybody eloquent, 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 eloquent. And maybe Moses is like some of us. Our accents reveal where we are from, no matter how much we hide it. And so he's thinking, Hollywood will not accept me. Sometimes God is not asking you to go to Hollywood. Sometimes God is asking you to be holy and he will bring the wood. <laughs> Let me tell you something. A kingdom is one that is self-sufficient. They bank among themselves. They trade among themselves. They do acquisitions among themselves. The minute the kingdom has to step outside the kingdom to go and borrow something, you are subject to that foreign kingdom too. That's what Tyler Perry did, right? Tyler Perry said he wants to do plays where they'll mention Jesus. All the networks that you like said, uh-uh, you can stick with God because that one is Sam's general. But the minute you bring Jesus Christ, uh-uh, so he went, cried a little bit, got encouragement, and now he has his own studio. So kingdom man, thank God for that rejection and use it for redirection. Next excuse. Number five. Someone else could do it better. Many men have insulted the HR department of God because we thought he made a mistake. <laughs> the one who created your tongue, you are telling him you are not eloquent. Okay. The God of all flesh, you are quoting to him the statistics of the medical history. Wasn't that Sarah's story? Sarah was like, God, God, I, oh God, I know you're able to do everything, but look, my, my, my body is, 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 you know, it's just, it's just gone. she laughed. She laughed. And God's response to that is that I will use you. In other words, it is not you. It 
which is the one controlling you. So if you're a man here and you've ever doubted your abilities because nobody in your family modeled those abilities, I understand. I understand. But God is the one in whose hands nothing becomes something. It is God. God is the one who can use five stones to do what a customized outfit of the king could not do. There are many of us, Saul is putting his armor on us. But because we think Saul's armor is the best, we are walking uncomfortably in it. We are bent out of shape, not in the original identity of God. But because people like it, we are wearing it. David said, sir, I respect you. I know this is made by the best there is. In today's world, it will be rejecting Air Force One <laughs> to go and fly Jet Blue. <laughs> or even Greyhound. Let's go, let's go for <laughs> to go and take Greyhound. But it shows that a man who looks to society to find the identity will change at every turn of society. But a man who anchors his identity on God, the storms will come. Seasons will come. Dispensations will come. But the Bible says, everything shall pass away. But the word of God shall not pass away. Please stand up on your feet. <laughs> I want you to find a man and interlock your arms like this. You see, until Moses accepted the call, help did not come. It is when he accepted that Aaron was sent. Because Aaron cannot be sent to a person who's running from the call. What's your address if you are running? <laughs> but if you are yielded, surrendered, stable, God can say, Aaron, go there. There are many men who are running, not because they are not called, but because they are traumatized by what the call will represent. The call of fatherhood. The call of the leader of a family. The call of the one who represents God in the society is under attack. Because the only duty Abraham had was to preserve the name of God in his generation. And today we are reading about it. What if Abraham failed? So whoever you are interlocked with, you are praying for them. We are praying that there will be a chain reaction among men. That there will be a synergy of seeing another brother whose struggles you identify with, but whose victory means as much to you as your own. The Bible says one shall do chase how many? So if you even do the multiplication, two shall do what? So when we are united, God even breaks down the multiplication rule. We're going to pray. And if you're a woman here, I want you to stretch forth your hand towards the men in our society. Because the way God works, it's order. If anybody comes through this church out of and comes through the roof, they are an intruder. If they come through the door, they are welcomed. So whatever God is going to do in our society, regardless of who is president, queen, CEO, whatever, it's going to start with a man. It's God's order. That's it.
Stretch forth your hand towards the man. First, we are going to pray that the identity of God will be the source of our value. Then we're going to pray that every trauma that God watched from heaven and have us endure and has kept us alive, may the lessons, the wisdom, and the blessings therein begin to manifest. And then we're going to pray that every voice that devalues our worth in our mind will be changed like Moses and God will answer every doubt in your mind. You cannot leave ark of men with the things that troubled you that you came with. No. 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 And there are some of you while you are praying you are going to be groaning. You are going to be shouting. It is not a time to look manly. It is a time to be manly. If you have to cry, cry. Listen, Jesus is our example. He wept. Right there. It's coming. It's coming. It's coming. Some of you are going to start breathing very heavy. You're going to breathe very heavy. It is going to bubble up. You can't contain it. You can't contain it. You can't contain it. Let it out. 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 Rabba Sukara. He kabara unduri bi. He kabandoro bosiya naraba. Some of you are having your burning bush experience right now. He kababa baba baba. Take me deep. Let it out. Let it out. Your freedom is at hand. Your freedom is at hand. Presence of my Savior. Hey, Kababababa. Let it out, let it out, let it out. In the presence of my Savior, Spirit, lead me where my trust is with Let me walk upon the walls. Jesus!
in the name of Jesus. Listen to me, men. The rate at which the world is changing. If we delegate responsibility to what we know church traditionally to be, do you know how long it takes to set up a church organization? Very long. So God is not just going to wait for churches to form before he does what he needs to do. He's depending on you and me wherever we find ourselves. But the problem is that many of us are like Peter. You know when Peter ran away and, and Jesus found him and says, when I have prayed for you, even though the enemy has sought to sift you, when you have been strengthened or when you have recovered, then you go strengthen your brothers. So the more Peter is weak, what happens to the brethren? They are waiting. There are many of you, a legitimate or genuine mistake is what is preventing you from embracing the ministry God has given you. It is not an accusation. You were wrong. You were wrong. But you are nullifying the prayers of Jesus by postponing the healing he offers. And by postponing the healing he offers, generations are dying because of your no. Lift up your hands. If you know how the enemy battles those of us who have said yes to the work of God. Who is that person who You know you are called into ministry. You don't know what it is that you have to do. But every time you think of ex accepting the call, the enemy plays your rap sheets of everything that you've done wrong ever in your life. When you get over that, he says, you don't even have ministry in your family. Nobody will listen to you. You are not worthy. Your friends know your faults and your mistakes. Who is that? Who is that? Who is that? Let's pray for you. Don't be shy. Don't be shy. Give him tissue. Don't be shy. Don't be shy. Don't be shy. Do you know that Moses' trauma was tailor-measured for the triumph he experienced with Israel? Because Moses had escaped Egypt by himself alone, God said, maybe you are the one who has the experience to help the people I want to escape. Stretch forth your hands towards these ones. Your trauma cannot stop what God wants to do. No. No, 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 no. Actually, we are going to submit our trauma to God. To use it. I, I don't know what yours is. But I know that there's ministry. After mistakes. There is triumph. After trauma. If we can submit it to God. The Bible says if any man is in Christ. He is a new creation. All things have all things have, all things have, all things have, all things have. All things have passed away. May the Lord anoint you for the work he has brought you to do. Receive the strength of the Lord. May nothing stop you. May nothing stop you. May nothing stop you. May nothing stop you. In the name of Jesus.
you play sports? What do you play? Football. As strong as you are on the outward, that's how strong you are potentially in the spirit. Let it go, bro. Can I hug you? Can I hug you? It is well. God bless you. Let it out. Let it out. You are here for a time like this. God is releasing you emotionally, Lord. Release him, Lord. gave the testimony? Was that your wife that gave the testimony? Your sister. Okay. Father, I pray for a man with such a big heart. I pray for direction. I pray for confidence. I pray for boldness. May the enemy seize his influence in your life from today. May you walk in the ordaining of God. May you walk in the authority of God. He told Moses, I will be with you and I will make you a God before Pharaoh. In other words, you will represent me. Are you ready to represent God in your family? Are you ready to represent God? Receive the touch to represent God. Florida? Mm. Holy Spirit. Receive the power of God. There's so much He wants to do. There's so much.
Look at me. If shh, if an armed robber who knows that if they miss the opportunity, they will go to jail for life, has one shot, will they choose an empty house or will they choose a full house? Which one do you think the armed robber will risk everything for? You are the full house. You are the full house. The devil doesn't attack us because of our heights. He attacks us because of our potential. That's why he tries to kill the babies before they mature. So even though you are looking at yourself saying, I haven't even scratched the surface of my potential and why these attacks? Well, it's easier to kill the seed before you cut down the main tree. But the problem is that you cannot allow the devil to be more spiritual than you. We see your future and you are seeing your present. I said before you, life and death, the Bible says, it's your choice. It's your choice. You know what I'm talking about. Your potential cannot be hidden. So your persecution will also be public. But God wants to glorify himself in you. Will you let him? Will you let him? Can you appoint a mentor for this man? Obviously not you. You, you. you have too much going on. But someone who can. Stretch forth your hand towards the sky. Oh, Father. Father, the burden is heavy. But you don't make mistakes. So he's the one. Will you help him? Will you hold his hand? Will you hold his hand? In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Some of you, some of you um, men, you have to start keeping an eye on these, on these ones. Receive your touch to be the man you are called to be. May the mistakes that were present in your past not follow you into the future. You are a new man in Christ. Your pattern and your DNA is traced through Jesus. May the Lord equip you to be the man. May no trauma This is why I don't like people to downgrade what God is doing in their life based on their past. Because I have been through it and now I do that. Sometimes when I hug the people, I feel exactly what they feel. So I'm like Moses who has been sent back to Egypt to bring the people the way I run alone. It is real, man. It is real. Look at this. Look at this. Look, it's coming. Look. Don't hold it back. So much on the inside. It's a, it's a mixture. You don't even know how to feel. You don't know whether to be angry, to cry, or to be sad. And it is in that, in that uncertainty that the devil begins to whisper. Whisper.
if I were you, I would have the Bible playing on my phone 24-7. Because too many words have been spoken to you. Too many thoughts have gone through your mind that are so opposite the word of God. It's like a bad building. Sometimes you have to uproot the foundation before you rebuild. You can't build, you can't just change windows. No. May God give you an assurance like Moses that I am with you. Not only is he saying I am with you, he says I will go with you. Even if your closest family member doesn't believe it, remind yourself that he is with you. He is with you. What is this? Sir, what is this? Oh, okay. All right. Father, what? Spread forth your hand towards this man. Another, another, another. Touch. Oh. Father, I pray. I'm asking him what he wants. He's not, he, he, he doesn't even know. And so the Lord who knows and the Lord who sees, the Lord who hears, may he answer that prayer from within. All the way from Chicago. May you live with answers. May you live with solutions. May you live liberated. In the name of Jesus. Emotional liberation, mental clarity is yours in the name of Jesus. Father, in the name of Jesus, you will not struggle with indecision. You will know what you want and you will know who you are. May the Lord order your steps. May the Lord prompt you and may you hear and perceive the promptings in the name of Jesus. Oh, thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Oh, Jesus. Oh, Jesus. What is, your, what, is, what is that thing that you are afraid of? What? What will it take to do right by God? How do we get faith? I hear the word submission. Do you know what it means to submit fully? No? That's what you need to do. Sometimes submitting means not doing what you know how to do doing what you've never done before at God's instruction. Because when you do what you know how to do, who's really in control? Yes. But the scary thing is God says you should do something you have not done before. And there's no blueprint. Like, so it's just my voice. Can you do that? If you submit, may the, may the Lord help you, sir. May the Lord help you. New things 
starts not with powerful people but with submitted people because they don't have anybody to copy. So may the Lord lead you. When you don't hear the voice of God, don't ask him to shout. Ask him to draw you closer. Because God is not going to increase the volume because of us. He is God. So develop intimacy with God. Trust him. Proverbs 3, 5. Proverbs 16 verse 3. Read those scriptures. Sir, where are you from? What do you do? What do you teach? Do your kids look up to you? Do some of them struggle with family issues all of them so you are their light for many of them so can we afford to have your light dim can we afford to have your light go out do you know that's a calling have you run away from that calling No more running. No more running. Embrace, trust, believe that God will deliver them through you in the name of Jesus. Look at me. you're shedding it's not wasted tears trauma in the hands of God will lead to triumph the Bible says we do not have a high priest who does not know what it is like to walk in your shoes he's the one taking your prayers to the father so never think you are alone he's with you Ironically, God did not prevent Moses from going through. He told him that I will be with you. So the process may include some uncomfortable places, but God is with you. And there are brethren who will stand with you, sir. Can I hug you? at me. Where you are going must be more prominent in your thoughts than where you have been. That life, that life, the old life, it, we don't even want it in the rear view mirror. So we, if we have to change highway, change highway, whatever it takes. Because there's so much that God will do once you align yourself where are you from? Jersey? Which part? No? Are you very popular there? You make music? What kind of music? Christian hip hop. May the Lord amplify your work. May the Lord amplify your work. May the Lord give you a platform to showcase what he can do with yielded vessels. In Jesus' name. My brother. Oh, Jesus Christ. Peace. Peace. You need a safe space, my brother.
Lift it up, lift it up, lift it up. He touched me. The Lord is touching everyone here. May the Lord touch you. That is represented here. That was meant to change the way you view God. 
and the way you view yourself, the Lord has rolled away. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And this is the test that you need to prepare for. When you encounter Egypt again, you going as baby Moses, runaway Moses, or Moses the liberator? Because I wish I could tell you that once you get delivered, you will never have the thoughts or they won't come again. But that's not true. Those thoughts might be brought to captivity. What the word of God says. When it comes again, remind that thought whose you are and who you are. What your purpose is. And turn that trauma to triumph. Because if the devil has thrown his best and you are still here, it means that it's time for God to use what he allowed you to go through to his glory. Somebody say amen. Church, I want you to embrace these men. The kingdom must be a safe place for God to glorify himself in everything he permits us to go through. Before I sit down, I want us to thank um, Bishop Elect again, of course. Because these kind of conferences where you focus on some of these things, they are not popular. E. Jakes used to do he motions. I don't think he's doing it anymore. But the woman's wa woman that will lose, he's even handed it over to the daughter. There's no son to do it. Not being done. Because it's not attractive. Because of the way society is wired. But you are kingdom people and you've seen what it can do. So before I sit down, I want to challenge every one of you here to sow a seed that will ensure that we will have Ark of Men. When is the next one? In November. Because a brother, somebody you will marry, somebody who will marry your sister is standing here or is here or will be coming who needs to benefit for whatever the theme will be for the next one. Sometimes when the Ark of Men announcement comes, I register before I find out I'm a speaker. In other words, if I'm not speaking, I'll be here. So, so I, I want to say, don't meet me here. Beat me here. So take, take a seed. Take anybody, all of us, all of us. We are taking a seed to sow into the next ark of men. You may take your seed. Even as you sing that song, can the sons of God stand up? While you're preparing your seed, stand up. We are children of God. We are children of God.
man say I am a child of God or oh, say like you believe it say I am a child of God say I am a child of God I am a child of God say the Lord is with us personalize say the Lord is with me so the Lord will go with me in Psalm 124 if you had not been for the Lord who was on our side then the Lord is on our side oh say like you, you, you believe that God is on your side I say the Lord is on our side that was the promise God gave to Moses I will be with you and that's all he needed that God will be with him and I pray that God will be with you here today in the name of Jesus that in the journey of your marriage in the journey of your fatherhood in the journey of destiny of ministry may God be with you say God is on my side you are coming out and you have come out from every trauma and your trauma has turned to what triumph god is going to use you to bring many people out of their trauma in the name of jesus amen so whatever the enemy put you through bible say all things work together for good to them that love the lord and are called according to his purpose so god is still going to use it for his own purpose in jesus name and may god align every man here may you may the lord bring you back on course that even if you have gone off the original path that the lord had for you may he bring you back on course in the name of jesus in the name of jesus what are we going to say to Pastor Paul for such a powerful ministration and the word? Come on, give God praise for his life. Come on, church, have you been blessed today? Celebrate God for his ministry. Celebrate God for the grace of God upon his life. Celebrate God in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. 21st century man 21st century Christian man 21st century kingdom man may the Lord give you the grace to still be able to make it to fulfill your purpose and fulfill your assignment may the Lord open your eyes to see what his original intent was for you in the name of Jesus and for the 21st century kingdom woman, may the Lord open your eyes to see the purposes of God for your life and also for the men in your life. May you not become a tool in the hands of this enemy to bring down the men in your life. And may you be a midwife that will help deliver the greatness that are in the men in your life. May the Lord be on the side of everyone here. May the Lord be on the side of every man. Every man. Men are under attack. But those that the Lord is on their side, they will be preserved. For if I had not been for the Lord who was on our side, we would have been finished. The devil would have taken us out. But thanks be to God. Who has not given us as a prey to their teeth. We have escaped as a bird escaping the snares of the fowler. The snare is broken. And we have escaped. Men, we have escaped. Oh, if you believe that you have escaped, shout and give God some praise. Say, I have escaped the snares of the enemy. Say, Satan, you cannot take me out. Say, Satan, you cannot eliminate me. 
Say, Satan, you cannot destroy my family. Say, Satan, you cannot destroy my marriage. Say, Satan, you cannot destroy my children. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. May God arise in your life. And may every enemy be scattered. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Before we take our hands, I want us to stretch forth our hands towards the man of God. We want to pray that the Lord will replenish him. A lot of grace, a lot of virtue has come out of him. He ministered a powerful word that has transformed our lives. We are praying that the Lord will protect him, cover him, expand his ministry. We want the Lord to release more grace, more wisdom, more knowledge. Lift up your voice. Begin to pray for him. Pray for him. Pray for his wife and children as well. May the Lord cover them even here as he has been a blessing to us. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Man talabasikadidadabasata. In talamalamasubrantidadabakapaha. Yepen talabasikadudadabasibrantidadabakapaha. Yes, pray for him. Pray for him. May graces be released. May the Lord replenish and strengthen him. In the name of Jesus, may he not be empty, man. May the Lord reveal him. We release a counter attack against every attack. Every retaliation from the pit of hell. We block their retaliation. We send it back to the sender. In the name of Jesus, may the Lord cover and protect him. In the name of Jesus. Say, my father, my father. This afternoon, anything that the enemy is using to stop me, to entangle me, to resist me from fulfilling your purpose for me on this earth, right now, by my prayers, I command those things to be removed. Say, let the chains fall. Let the entanglement be broken. Be broken. Be broken. Any attack of the enemy, I release a counter attack against that attack. Say, Satan, take your hands off me. Lose my destiny. Lose my marriage. Lose my health. Lose my breakthrough. Lose my job. Lose my ministry. Lose my career. Lose me now. 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 As I as I begin to clap my hands and pray, let the chains be broken perpetually in the name of Jesus. Say I will fulfill my destiny in Jesus' name. Come on, clap your hands, pray, release yourself before you go home let that be a release 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 Let the Lord release. Let the chains fall. Let that entanglement be broken. In the name of Jesus. Of Jesus. Second Corinthians chapter ten, verse four to six. It says, "For the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, 
but by it through God to the pulling down of strongholds. Tonight, today, before we leave, we want to pull down every stronghold. Yes, Lord. You see, God, the, the society, the tradition, and our culture have taught us some things that are hindering us as men and as women as well. Your definition of what a man is is not what God's definition is. Because the culture is telling you something. And now it has formed a stronghold that we cannot break out of it. But the Bible says for the weapons of our warfare, it's not a physical weapon, but it's what? It's mighty through God to the pulling down of that doctrine, that stronghold, that mindset. So they want to pull down every mindset. Jesus. That tells you that the fact that you are not working means that you are not a man. Jesus. You see, that mindset that tells you the fact that you cook for your family means that you are not a man. And for the woman, the fact that your man is not working does not mean that he's not a man. It's a mindset that must break. Yes. Because there is times and seasons for everything. There are seasons in your life that you may work. There are seasons in your life that you may not work. So we want to pray because one of the things that men are struggling with truly is the definition of who they are. And it's because of the stronghold. We want to pray, oh Lord, anything we've learned from the society, Jesus. anything we've learned from now our culture, Jesus. our even the things we've learned from our forefathers, Jesus. we want the Lord, remove those things yes, Lord. And, Lord. and give us the mind of God. Yes, Lord. For the weapons of our warfare, they are what? They are not carnal. They are not carnal, but they are mighty through God to yes. the pulling down of that stronghold. If you continue, you said that casting down imagination, casting down imagination, and every high thing that exalts itself against the knowledge of God. God and bringing into captivity every thought to the obedience of Christ. Ah, as a man, I want you to pray. As a woman, I want you to pray. In the mindset, in the doctrine, in the stronghold that you've learned from the world. Today, let it break. Let the let it break. In the name of Jesus. Say, my father, my father. This afternoon, as I begin to pray, oh Lord, let every evil strong hold in my mind be pulled down be pulled down say as I begin to pray I cast out every imagination and every thought that is risen against the knowledge of God oh Lord I bring it to captivity my mind my mind my mind my mind in the name of Jesus in the name of Jesus under the subjection of Jesus Jesus Christ, come on, lift up your voice uh, and pray. Arrest every stronghold. Arrest it. Break down the stronghold for the weapons of our warfare. They are not carnal, but they are mighty. Ah, they are mighty through God. To the pulling down. They're pulling down. They're pulling down. They're pulling down. They're pulling down of the stronghold in the lies that we've been taught by the enemy by our culture by our society let it be arrested let it be pulled down let it be pulled down let it be pulled down. Yes, Lord. Palamasi tali la la bakapa. Ya pantari ya la basa. Ima da da bakapa. Tori ya da da basa. Ya pantari ya la bakapa. Ima da da basu brande rebo kapa. Ya pantala bakapa. Ya brantu la la basi brandi la da baha. Brantu la la basi brande rebo kapa. Let every stronghold be pulled down, be pulled down, be arrested. Tala masita, tola masibra dira dabaha. 
E manda da ba sobra tira da ba ka paha. E apenta da ba sobra tira da ba ha. E manda da ba sobra tira da ba ha. First century life has changed. One of the things that help our forefathers' marriages to work is because, because of the interdependency on each other. Nowadays, we don't depend on each other anymore for survival. But the original intent for God was that He said, It is not good that a man should be alone. And now let me make him a help. So that means that there must be interdependency between the males and the female. But because of what the culture is telling us, there is independency going on. But that is not the, the, the original plan of God. Yes, you can still have your degrees, you can still do well, but the core reason why God brought you together must not be missed. You want to pray that any spirit that wants to separate Men Jesus. from their wives. Jesus. Spirit of feminism that has entered the world that now is teaching women to do their own. That there's no need for you for any man. Spirit that is feminizing men to get to a point where men are not able to pull their weight. It's like it's it's bringing us apart more than bringing us together. We want to pray. Yes, Lord. We want to go back to what God is saying, not what the world is saying to us. Yes. In the name of Jesus name Christ, of Jesus. that yes, you can. Your wife can still be the most knowledgeable, the most with degrees, but still remember that the reason why God brought you together. Yes. And so, in the twenty-first century, our identity is not in what we do, but in our purpose. You know the purpose of a car. You don't. You cannot redefine the purpose of a car because cars were made to move, and made to sit in and drive. The purpose of this mic is to amplify my voice. You cannot change that. And the moment you change it, you begin to abuse the mic. Nowadays, the enemy is in the process of changing even our identity, our sex. Amen. Nowadays, people, <laughs> people are confused. I saw a man with a long wig and a beard. And she calls herself, I don't even know what to call and there's a lot of confusion going on and these are things that men are going through you you are a man but you think that you are a woman uh -huh. so so we want to pray that anything that is bringing separation rather than bringing us together we want to break it yes lord in the name of jesus, name Christ. Of jesus. jesus. and this is a spirit that wants to really mess up what god wants to do you see the original plan as pastor paul said is God's original plan is through the man he started this whole family. And so that plan has not changed with God. Amen. So man, your purpose is bigger than what you think. So that foundation, that purpose of you being a family must be recognized. That through you, God is raising a whole family. Whether you work or you don't work, your purpose is needed. 
your presence is needed your input is needed you are so valuable you are so appreciated and we must appreciate that in the name of Jesus Christ in the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. we want to pray today the Lord anything that wants to separate families so you realize that even the divorce rate outside the church is the same as inside the church and even the church is even worse than now because society is determined is, de is, is, is detecting to us and we call ourselves kingdom men and kingdom women may we return back yes Lord. Lord. not back into captivity but back to the word what is God saying what is God saying and nowadays the things that we're supposed to be used to help each other we use to compete against each other What we are supposed to use to build our family, we are using to fight each other. Kingdom man, Arise. the Lord is with us. We must pray through this. This is a demonic agenda. The Bible said that the weapons of our warfare, they are not carnal because the things that are fighting us are not carnal. we wrestle not against flesh and blood but against principalities against powers things are contending to take away your manhood so when you see and the child is a boy kill him Naomi became bitter because every man in her life died. Don't let the world fool you. Make you think that you don't need a man. You'll be a better woman. You'll never find your fulfillment. So we want to pray that any attack on the men in our lives See how, you, how much you loved your daddy? Some of the women here. Not even when your daddy was wrong, you fought for him. But it was your mom that pushed you. But you stand behind your dad and fight your mom. Because the purpose of a man in the family is bigger than what we think. We want to pray. Lord, preserve the man. Preserve yes, us, Lord. Lord. Anything that wants to separate us, Jesus. that causes us not to interdepend. There's a partnership part of our marriages that are, the enemy wants to kill. If you're a partner, then you depend on each other to make it work. Nowadays, the enemy wants to remove partnership out of marriage. So you have your own accounts. You do your own thing. You are not in need for, you, you don't need each other for anything. The enemy is really working. These are things that are not popular to say. But we cannot sit there for the enemy to continue to destroy. We want to pray, Lord. Bring us back on course. Yes, Lord. Bring our marriages back on course. Yes, Lord. Bring our society back on course. Yes, Lord. That anything that has been set up to cause us to be independent. That even marriage is a, is a covenant thing. That you go before, the Bible said the two shall become one. Nowadays, the two has become two. One plus one is two in our world, but in the kingdom, in heaven, the one plus one is one. God said, the two shall become one. But the enemy wants to separate the two. We want to pray against it. Anything that wants to separate, Jesus. let it be arrested. Be arrested. In the name of Jesus, name of Jesus. Let, it let it be arrested. Let it, let it be, arrested. be arrested. In the mighty name of Jesus, name of say, Jesus. My, father, my, father. my father, my father, today, today. 
as I begin to pray, anything that the enemy is using to separate men from women today, let it be arrested. Let it be arrested. Let it be arrested. Let it be arrested. Come on, clap your hands. Arrested. It will not work. The Lord is with us. It will not work. It will not work. It will not work. It will not work. Let it be arrested. Arrested. Find it. eyes once again. Yes, Lord. May the Lord give you vision. Yes, Lord. Your past will not determine your future. Yes, Lord. There is a greater future waiting for you. Yes, Lord. What is holding you back is your past. Jesus. It is your trauma. May Jehovah deliver you. Yes, Lord. May the Lord, Lord deliver you from your trauma and your past. Yes, Lord. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Say, I close the chapter. I close the chapter. From my past. From my past. Say, I close it. I close Say, I close it. Say I am moving forward. Say I am moving forward. Say I am moving forward. Say my past will not determine my future. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. See what I went through will not hold me back. Will not hold me back. Say in the chain from my past holding me. Let that chain break. 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 name of Jesus name of Jesus I release you to move forward yes Lord move forward yes Lord move forward yes Lord may the Lord be with you yes may the Lord be with you may the Lord give you vision may you be able to see from here and see into the future may the Lord unveil to you vision give yes, you Lord. vision may the Holy Ghost come and show you who you are Say, Lord, Lord, open my eyes, open my eyes to see who I am. To see who I am. The most dangerous attack on a man is his vision. If you take away his vision, he's nowhere. And so when the Bible said, when the Spirit of the Lord come, he said, he will caused them young men and young women to see uh, to, to to prophesy and he said only the young men did not even talk about the young men he said the young men shall see visions 
Joel 2 28 you shall see visions then it shall come to pass afterwards that I will pour out my spirit upon all flesh your sons and your daughters shall prophesy your old men shall dream dreams your young men shall see what visions so so young man you need vision because you know what how can you tell somebody to help you and you don't know where you are going Jesus. where are we going I don't know you want to pray quick prayer before we before the next one minute say Lord show me where I am going show me where I am going show me give me vision for my life give me vision for my life right now just speak to the Lord quickly in Jesus name Jesus Father, we thank you. Bless you for what you have done today. Thank you for your man servants. For using him to change our lives. To transform our minds. And moving us to the next level. May your grace continue to be upon him. May your hand continue to be upon him. Continue to use him. To transform many lives. We thank you for his life. Thank you for his family. His ministry, his love, his children. May you continue to protect them in Jesus' name. Lord, we thank you for what you have done this weekend with the man. For what you have done, may it be sealed with the blood of Jesus. Yes, Lord. And we pray that the enemy will not be able to take it away. Yes. And that these men will come back in November and bring, come back with a testimony. Jesus. In the name of Jesus, we thank you. Thank you for our women. The Lord, you have opened their eyes as well to know what you want them to do. We thank you and bless you. In Jesus' name we pray. Somebody say amen. 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 God bless you. Let's quickly share. Um, let's go into our testimonies and then we will close. God bless. So please have your seat as we... KMT family, okay. we pray you were blessed by today's word. On behalf of Bishop elect Dominic Osei and Prophetess Leslie Osei, we would like to welcome you to Kingdom Full Tabernacle International Ministry. Our mission is to manifest the kingdom of God on earth, and we are located here at 65 Tokenique Road, Darien, Connecticut. Here begins our weekly announcements for our HQ. Every Monday through Thursday, we have our midday prayers starting at 12 p.m. live on Facebook and YouTube. We also have our Midnight Oil every Monday through Thursday at 11.59 p.m. live on Facebook and YouTube. Every Wednesday at 7 p.m. we have Bible studies where we dedicate time to study the Word of God. Be sure to join us in-house and online. After Bible studies, we have Terry Night where the sanctuary is open for individuals to pray and tarry. We have Fire Night every Friday at 7 p.m. Our Fire Night service is a time of warfare, intercession, and deliverance. We meet every Sunday at 10 a.m. for Sunday service. Join us as we start off our weeks in the presence of God. God has blessed KFT with two amazing branches. Our first branch is located in Charlotte, North Carolina. We have Jericho Hour there every Saturday at 10 a.m. And we also have service there every Sunday at 1 p.m. Our second branch is located in Maryland at our new, brand new 130 acre location. We have Sunday service there at 11 a.m. If you are in the neighboring states, please be sure to join us in house. The location is addressed at 11,000 Metapony Road, Upper Marlboro, Maryland. Our upcoming programs are as follows. Our baptism will be taking place on July 1st for those who have completed the new membership class. Please note that registration is required. By the grace of God, KFT will be turning seven years this year. Join us as we thank God from July 6th to the 9th. We will also be having a special Thanksgiving service celebrating seven years in ministry by God's grace. The number seven signifies perfection and completion. Join us as we close out one chapter in ministry. Our grand opening will be taking place on July 23rd. Join us as we dedicate our new church building. 
Ladies, are you ready for the biggest women's conference of the summer? Our Think Pink conference is taking place this year from August 7th to the 13th. This year, it will be a whole week long. We will be starting off with two days of global prayers, then we have a special girl chat, and then our Think Pink conference takes off starting Thursday until Sunday. Be sure to purchase your tickets and invite a friend. Our most anticipated 21-day marriage and destiny fast is approaching us on October 2nd to the 22nd. We'll be turning over our plates to seek the face of God in another level. On the last Friday of the fast, we will have our 12-hour shut-in. Please stay tuned for more details. Kingdom Men, the year is not over yet, and we have one more Ark of Men's conference, the last gathering taking place from November 10th to the 12th. Stay tuned for more details. Pleased to announce that our Papa, Bishop-elect Dominic Osei, has released a new book titled Discipleship, Discovering Spiritual Maturity. This book unveils a wealth of knowledge on how to be a disciple and covers subtopics such as the habit of praying, fellowship, and giving and receiving. Please visit kftchurch.com to purchase yours. Ashley, make sure to follow us on all of our social media platforms so that you stay connected. Here ends today's announcements. God bless you. Oh, come on, do it better for the Lord. Come on, do it better for Jesus. Amen. So Kingdom Men, as you can see on the screen, you want to pick up your phone and then scan the QR code and let's register right away for the third gathering in just a few months. But before we leave this place, I want us to stretch our hand towards the angel over this commission, the bishop-elect. We want to pray for our father. Putting men together like this is not easy. He said yesterday that Bishop T.D. Jake started manpower, but now it's no longer there. And so we want to pray that God will give him the grace. God will give him the tenacity. That this will not be a history. That we once started Ark of Men and it's no longer there. But Ark of Men will continue. That our children's children's children will come and meet this great mandate. And so I want all of us to stretch our hand towards our Father. And I want us to pray for him. Lift up your voice and begin to pray. That the bishop elect God himself will strengthen him. That God himself will continue to carry him. As he has decreed that the Lord is on our side, the Lord will also be on his side. Open your mouth, men, and let's pray. Women, join us and let's pray that such a great mandate like this from heaven will stand the test of times in the name of Jesus. That nothing will abort this mission. That nothing will abort this agenda. That all that the bishop needs, heaven will back him in the name of Jesus Christ. Open your mouth and let's pray for our father. Come on church, let the heavens hear you. We need the bishop to continue this assignment. We need the bishop to keep this mandate going. We need the bishop to hold on in the name of Jesus Christ. Lord, strengthen your man's servant in this season in the name of Jesus. That act of men will not be a thing of the past, but act of men will stand. That it will continue in the name of Jesus. Nothing will cause this move to be stricken down in the name of Jesus. Lord, empower your man's servant with all that is needed. May the heaven back him in the name of Jesus that he will not give up, that he will hold on, that he will stand firm to push the man that you are bringing his way, that he will continue in this season of his life in the mighty name of Jesus. And so, Father, we are grateful. We are grateful for your man's servant, the bishop elect Tom Nicose. Thank you for even giving him this vision. Father, we are grateful. We ask that you preserve your man's servant. We ask that you give him the grace that is needed to continue this agenda. That nothing of the enemy will cause him to lose focus. That Father, he will stand tall and hold the hands of the men that you have brought his way. That we will indeed become kingdom men. Father, continue to keep your man's servant. We even pray, oh God, for his wife, the prophetess, that you continue to keep them in the name of Jesus. As he has decreed that nothing will tear us apart, we decree that they will also stand together and stand firm in the name of Jesus. 
We decree that any eye and any voice that is not of God, that is speaking against their marriage, is speaking against their children, we condemn it in the name of Jesus and we decree that this marriage, this family will stand in the name of Jesus Christ. Father, give them what it takes to continue to lead us as a church. And at the end of the day, we'll give you glory and honor. Father, we thank you and we give you all the praise in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Kingdom men, before we zone out, we want to once again invite the father of the house, the bishop elect, as he gives us the benediction and bless us. Ladies and gentlemen, let's receive our father, the bishop elect, Dominic Osei. Amen. God bless you all for your prayers. Um, before we go, if you're here for the very first time, can you just wave at me? This is your first time at KFT. Amen. Come on, let's welcome them. Amen. If you don't mind, can you come forward for me, please? Those that are here for the very first time. Come on, celebrate God for your lives, please. Jesus and you want to accept Jesus as your Lord and Savior can you wave at me if anybody here wants to accept Christ as your Lord and Savior including those that are standing in front you can also lift up your hands I want to pray with you before we go anyone 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 go once or twice amen now also if you want to be a member of this ministry maybe you've been coming uh, I feel led by the Holy Ghost to join this commission and today I want to just also welcome you if you are here in front if you want to be a member as well you can lift up your hands anyone want to be a member of this ministry can we can you please come forward for me please let's welcome them you guys can stand on my right hand here please amen anybody else yes new members New members, KFT. Come on, celebrate God. When your husband comes, may he join the church. In Jesus' name, amen. Some of you, I don't know, your husband will come back here. Um, you want to join the church? Can you move this way, this way, please? Amen. God bless you for joining us. We are so happy that you decided to join this family. I, pray, I know your life will never be the same in Jesus' name. Amen. And for those that are visiting us for the first time, God bless you for visiting us. This is Kingdom Full Tabernacle International Ministries. Uh, our doors are always open for you. We pray that this will not be your last time coming. You will come and visit us more. Amen. Amen. I just want to pray that anything that you came here, whatever the Lord brought you here for, may you receive it. May the Lord answer every prayer that you prayed. May you go back with a testimony. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen and amen. Amen. Now we have the welcome team. Where's the welcome team? Yes, this beautiful sister. Can you come show yourself so they can see you? Because I can't see you. Yes. All right. Can you please follow her? They will take your information. And also for those that are being members, also you have all the information that you need because you need to go through the classes and then after that we will reintroduce you to the church. Please, can you follow them to that room right there? Right there, it will be so quick. Amen. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. Thank you. God bless you. Amen. Amen. We thank God for adding more people to us. Jesus name lift up your hands as we close Kali mazuta la masahas Pele mezuka di andara basuka de de boka paha menta la basuke di la la masaha Father we thank you we thank you we don't take it for granted 
we thank you for the many testimonies we thank you for preservation exactly a year ago today our our offer was accepted for this building and today we say thank you it's been less than a year and you've done so many great things we say thank you look at these men it's not easy to gather men because the enemy is so busy taking them away but you have allowed these ones to come before you we say thank you thank you for their lives thank you for transforming them thank you for impacting your grace upon them thank you for preserving their lives thank you for what you are doing in their lives we give you all the praise and all the glory i pray that the heavens over their lives will be open and i pray that you will be with them as you were with moses that in, in all that they're going through they will know that you are with them may they come back with a testimony we thank you for your man servant that you've used to be such a blessing this weekend we give you praise for his life that you continue to work through him to change many destinies we thank you and bless you and now lift up your hands as you receive the benediction may the lord bless you may the lord keep you may the lord shine his face upon you and be gracious unto you may the lord lift up his countenance may the heavens over you be open and grant you peace peace and peace you are blessed and you are highly favored your cars are covered with the blood no accident will go ahead of you i pray that the angels will go ahead of you make every crooked path straight may this week be your best week yet May the heavens open over this week. May you hear good news. Good news. Good news. Good news. May you be full of the Holy Ghost. May you be filled with the Holy Ghost. May you sense him when he speaks to you. In Jesus' name, we have prayed. Somebody say amen. 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 Let's share the grace of God together. Be with us now and forevermore. Share with it surely, goodness and mercy shall follow us all the days of our lives. And we shall dwell in the house of the Lord forever and ever. Amen. Kingdom man. Amen. God bless you. Have a blessed week. others for the third gathering. That's what we are going to do right now. And so can we have some of you stand on the pulpit if it's possible? Can we have some just stand because it's too wide so some can just be on the pulpit for us? From Prince. From Prince side, all of you to the back, please. Let's get on the pulpit real quick. All right. Manny, are you ready? I'll use the two of them.
Hello, Kingdom Men. Please, we're just filming a quick thank you video that's gonna go on the page. So if you all can just move in closer, those of you on the side, Shuka, Cliff, please, we can't see you. Move in. Can you guys move back just a little bit on this side? No, he's fine, he's fine. Yes. Let's get together, let's get together. Okay. Please look happy and energized. Brother Kenny is gonna say kingdom man. You guys have to shout the loudest arise you've ever shouted at this conference, okay? Are we good? Professor Are we good? Are we good? Are we good? Kingdom man! Kingdom man! Kingdom man! Well, we are excited that you joined us for this year's Act of Men's Gathering. It was so exciting. It was so impactful. Be sure to join us for our third gathering, which is on the 10th to the 12th of November, 2023. And we promise your life will never be the same. God bless you for joining us. One more time, Kingdom Man! Kingdom Man! Kingdom Man! Thank you and God bless you all. Thank you, brothers.